Patchwork Heart Ministry and Fiat Ministry Network invite you to discover your mission. A brand new in-depth monthly video series featuring engaging Catholic speakers who will challenge you to live your life abundantly. For only $25 a month, you will receive a personal monthly mission, including three full-length inspirational talks that build upon a new theme each month. Sign up for the Discover Your Mission tier at patreon.com slash Patchwork Heart Ministry today. Another edition of Hungry for More. I'm your host, Al Smith, the Pipe Padre. And, uh, you know, you've been hearing me talk a great deal about the Immortal Combat Men's Conference that's coming up uh, from July 7th to 9th in the year of our Lord 2020. And uh, again, a great conference with almost two dozen speakers. And the keynote speaker is Father Dwight. Longenecker, and uh, I'm going to have him on the show today. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about his book, uh, Immortal Combat. We're going to talk a bit about the Ben's Conference and uh, just have a great uh, little bit of a sharing together. So uh, he's a great uh, holy priest that I enjoy uh, his writing. He's an excellent blogger, actually an award-winning blogger. And so, uh, you know, again, you'll see that in uh, how he will... Um, uh, articulate his position. And um, again, we all need to be schooled in the faith, and uh, we're all called to warfare, spiritual warfare especially. And uh, Father Dwight will uh, give us a few pointers today. So I'll share that interview with you in a few moments that I recorded yesterday. Uh, but uh, again, I think you'll really enjoy, um, again, his way of looking at the world and how uh, evil has entered the world, and yet he shows us how to uh, spot it and uh, expose it. And of course, he provides the remedy um, against evil. And uh, so please stay tuned. But uh, let us begin with prayer, as we always do. And uh, one of my favorite prayers is a prayer to uh, that St. Teresa of Avila composed many years ago. So I'll ask my producer, Kent Kohalski, to bring it up on the screen and ask you to pray with me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let nothing disturb you. Let nothing frighten you. All things are passing. God never changes. Patience obtains all things. Nothing is wanting to him who possesses God. God alone suffices. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Please uh, stay with us and enjoy this interview I had uh, yesterday with Father Dwight Longenecker as we talk about the Immortal Combat uh, Men's Conference coming up and his new book, Immortal Combat. Please enjoy. Okay, so I want to welcome to the show uh, Father Dwight uh, Longenecker. Of course, Father Dwight is a pastor of Our Lady of the Rosary Parish in Greenville, South Carolina. He is uh, a well-known blogger, author, uh, 20 books to his record. Uh, many people know him. They'll find him on social media. And so I want to welcome him to the show today, to Hungry for More. Thank you for coming on, Father Dwight. Thanks, Al. Thanks for the invitation. Oh, you're welcome. Father Dwight, of course, your book, um, Immortal Combat, uh, has been talked a great deal. Um, you know, I have a, a PDF file, and of course, I love to uh, pull things up in full color and show our audience, and um, I have many books behind me. But uh, what, do you th what do you think of the cover? Isn't it, isn't it great? I love it. And, you know, I think we don't study art enough, and um, this is the beauty. I mean, this one... Of course, it's probably from the 1500s or something. But of course, it's our Lord's right hand. I think when I look at it and um, 
the power of his hand. But, uh, you know, uh, was that, did you choose that uh, art design? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah we, we struggled over the, the cover. Um, wanted to have it to be as kind of uh, shocking, I think, and uh, visceral as the book is. Uh, and uh, But also we, we wanted to make sure that the, the theme of spiritual uh, combat was a really a focus on the cross because it, it, as you've read the book, you realize my, my point is saying we want to preach Christ crucified. Um, and so this image struck up. It's from the Grunev, what's called the Grunewald um, altarpiece, um, which is, I think, in, in uh, Holland or someplace like that. But anyway, it's a, it's, it's a medieval artwork, which was painted um, in the uh, during the Black Death, actually, during the plague. Uh, and the Christian iconography at that point became very grim. There was lots of portrayals of hell and death and skeletons and death and the end of the world and the apocalypse because, you know, a huge, I mean, we're in the middle of a pandemic now, but I mean, compared to the Black Plague, this is the Black Plague. I mean, something like a third of the European population perished and they didn't just um, have a few coughs and sniffles. I'm sorry to mitigate. I'm not. I'm not negating the pandemic. If people were sick with COVID, some of them get really sick. I realize that. But Black Death, um, you would break out in blistering sores, and then you would be bleeding from most of your orifices before you died an agonizing death, a slow agonizing death. You know, it was just horrible. Um, anyway, that's <laughs> we're off topic already. But that's that's where the picture comes from, uh, and that too is kind of appropriate for the times. I, after the book was written and published, um, you know, we we ended up in the middle of this pandemic. We ended up in the middle of of um, the, the the riots and the unrest in our country right now. And the book speaks to all those things. You know, it actually says, "Look, here's the the subtitle is confronting the heart of darkness." And I, I you you know, you've read the book and you've you've realized the first half of it really does get pretty pretty dark. Yeah, and I think this is what um, many people need to have a history lesson. And uh, I know that uh, my good wife has said that to me time and time again. If you read history, you'll figure things out. A lot right. of these things have happened before, and uh, we have to be, um, like I say, a good student of history to understand what's going on. And you've really done that well in the first half of your book when you talk about sin. And uh, this is uh, something I think that people even don't want to talk about. I know Archbishop Sheen said the greatest sin in the world is the denial of sin. Right. But um, you, you nail it on the head with um, kind of exposing sin for what it is, where it came from, and its origins. And um, again, maybe you can kind of share with us a little bit about this methodology of meeting people where they're at through history. Yeah. Well, one of the problems with talking about sin in the modern world is that <clears throat> we have... Um, Churchmen, Catholics and Protestants have played down sin because they got the nervous about, oh, we're going to make people feel guilty if we talk about sin. Oh, we're going to make people feel sad. And so what's happened is the um, emphasis on sin has been reduced to kind of like the mistakes you make. I mean, how many times have you gone to Mass and the priest stands up and says, now we all want to tell God about the few things that we've done this week that maybe we're a bit ashamed of and we know that we can do better. Well, okay. But, you know, the sin is not really, Jesus did not die on the cross um, uh, because I lost my temper once or twice. You know, Jesus did not die on the cross because I looked at a dirty book once or twice. Okay, I'm not saying those things aren't sins. They are. But the, the naughty things that we've done are not what I call the sin of the world. The sin of the world is a complex network of evil, deception, lies, violence, inner darkness uh, and and most of all lying to ourselves which is I, I call it a network or a web of deception um and th this 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 network is is written through all of human history all of our relationships and all of our natural sort of politics and 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 money and everything else and um this is what I'm trying to get at in the, in the first half of the book. I'm trying to really say this is what the sin of the world is. It's not the naughty things you've done. The naughty things you've done are the are the symptoms of the sin of the world. They're, they're the outworking of the sin of the world. The sin of, world, sin of the world is much deeper. And, you know, if you use the analogy of a house, it's the stuff down in the cellar. Uh, and all of us keep the cellar door locked. 
you know, we want to live up in the in the family room where everything's happy and cozy. We have a flat screen TV, but down in the down in the cellar is where stuff stinks, and that's where the sin of the world is, and it's it's in all of our cellars. Right. I love how you bring to the reader's attention what I like to call the three P's and the three R's. Okay. The three I know. P's. I'm, an, I'm an addict of alliteration. You'll have to forgive me. And my, my parishioners get a bit tired because all of my homilies end up having three points beginning with the same letter. It's, it's, it's the poet in me, um, the, yeah. bad, the bad poet. Right. But you know, what's beautiful about your book and people will see is that every chapter connects together. You always just weave. It's almost like you're taking a piece of thread and you're tying each chapter together. And they so it blends so beautifully. But uh, there is, like you say, a catechesis, a lesson plan in every chapter. But you take time to kind of unpackage resentment, rivalry, and revenge. And if when I look at the 6 o'clock news and I see these riots, I see these, um, uh, I just want to say, outcries. Um, mm. I go back to those three R's, resentment, rivalry, revenge. And uh, yeah. maybe you could well, make commentary to that. Yeah, the, the, this, this uh, is, comes on after you already mentioned the three P's, which is power, pride, and prejudice. Um, and we talk about that first. But then resentment, um, you know, I, I drew from the work of Max Scheller, who's a German philosopher who was uh, active, I think, the beginning of the 20th century. And... Um, he wrote a book called Resentiment, which is a, a, a in-depth analysis of this thing called resentment. And resentment is not, um, it's not just, oh, Jimmy got a bigger piece of pie than I did, or Sally won the race that I wanted to win. I feel resentful. No, resentment is, with a capital R, is, is what I call the resentment loop, where we've been hurt, maybe we've been wounded, maybe we really have been a victim of injustice okay so so it's not necessarily just because we're being big crybabies and maybe we really have been hurt but we carry that hurt in our heart and, and we we rehearse over and over again this resent this hurt that we've suffered maybe we even get into what i call resentment loop where we say you wait till i see him next time i'll tell him what i really think i'm really gonna give him peace of my mind and i'm gonna get even with him or whatever and and that resentment loop continues to spin and if we allow it to go on. I mean, hopefully we look in the mirror and we say, what am I, this is dumb. What am I doing this for? But if we allow it to, to eat away at us, um, it builds into the next stage, which I call rivalry, which is not, again, not just ambition or trying to win the game or being better than the next guy. That's natural. And there's something kind of healthy about that. Rivalry is where we really consider the other person to be the enemy right? Uh -huh. Not just yes. a rival, but an enemy. Um, because they're the cause, because resentment wants to blame somebody else for the problem. They are the cause of our problem. They become the rival. Uh, and rivalry then leads to the third R, which is revenge. Um, if we have the power and we have the ability, uh, we will actually t eventually fulfill our resentment loop and take it out on that person. Um, its ultimate um, endpoint, of course, is murder um, mm -hmm. and war. We, we, we kill the other person. Uh, and <laughs> that's where we, we get things get really dark. Now, in the book, of course, I say, I keep saying to the reader, you want to say, well, I'm not like that. I, I've never killed anybody. Um, I'm a good person. I see what you mean, but those other people out there, they're the ones who are doing all the bad stuff, not me. I'm not like that. I've never killed anybody. <laughs> and I want to come back and say, well, really? Have you never said to anybody, I never want to speak to you again? Or have you ever just quietly shunned somebody and ruled them out of your life and, and made sure that they weren't there anymore? Because if you want somebody to be out of your life permanently, that means you want them dead. Um, okay, you're not going to go and cut their throat, but this is where we, it leads. This is why I call it the heart of darkness, because it really is there lurking um, in our heart. There's a beautiful line in the book of Genesis, <clears throat> right at the beginning of the Bible, in the Cain and Abel story. It's a little metaphor, which sometimes is, is people miss because we read too quickly. Um, and it's when Cain is being tempted to kill his brother Abel. I think that's where it is. And, and uh, the angel says to him, evil is lurking like a wolf at your door. Wow, that's right there in, in, in the book of Genesis. Huh. And and this is what I'm getting at. It, it's that evil which is lurking at the, as a wolf at, at, at your door. Wow, yeah. I love how, um, you know, you really bring to our attentions this, um, where's the fight anymore? 
you know, the very beginning of the book and it's it preframes everything to say, this is about battle, but how come we don't sing onward Christian shoulders? <laughs> so, so, like all those things. That's and, a good fight. <laughs> yeah, like, and you thought, you know what? Father Dwight's right. We're not into the fighting mood anymore. It's right. all about I, being nice. And and that's, of course, what do they say? Um, what, for evil to prosper, good men do nothing. And um, you have that one line in the book I love. It says, we all must choose and not to choose is to choose. Um, when we don't choose anything, we're choosing something. Right. And I, I think we have to have this wake-up call. And this is kind of how you start. It's a wake-up call to say, everybody, um, can we go back to fighting again? Because... Yeah. So yeah, it, it, you open up the cupboard and, and 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 polish up the armor and 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 sharpen your sword. You know the thing is the b battle, the, the metaphor of battle for spiritual life, is right there again from the sacred scriptures. You know I'm I'm a convert to the Catholic faith. I was brought up as an evangelical Christian, and, and the the best riches I have from that from that wonderful upbringing was a great knowledge of the Bible and scriptures all the way through are loaded front loaded with the assumption that it is a battle you're engaged in a battle in the old testament it's a literal battle the, the the children of israel have to go out with their armor on and slay the amalekites and all this stuff but if you read the psalms time and time again the psalms are speaking of uh, the lord trains my hands for battle and my fingers for war he is my shield and my buckler he is my mighty defense he is my fortress he is my weapon he uh, and then all through the new testament it echoes into what Jesus says and St. Paul says and St. Peter says. And then you start reading the lives of the saints. All of them in one way or another, sooner or later, talk about being warriors, being in the Lord's army, fighting for the right, fighting against evil. Even the most um, sissy of saints, you know, um, and St. Therese of Lisieux is one of my favorites because of this. Um there she is, you know, the little flower, you know, with her bunch of roses and all this little sissy French stuff. And she's saying, sanctity must be won at the point of a sword, you know. And when she's on her deathbed gasping her last from tuberculosis, only 24 years old, and she's wasting away, she one of the last things she says is, I will die with my weapons in my hand. I mean, this is stirring stuff. This is thrilling stuff. And, and instead... We have quietly forgotten it all and put it away and said, oh, no, we don't want to be like that anymore. We don't want to be like jihadi warriors. I'm saying, come on, we're not jihadi warriors. We're not we're not cutting people's heads off and bombing them. You know, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a spiritual warfare here. So stop being a wimp and be a warrior. <laughs> yeah. And you nailed it with St. Therese, because when you read her writings, she talks about being a warrior and you talk about how she dressed up as St. Joan of Arc and yeah. um, she had that fiery spirit. I mean, one thing I love about St. Therese that she sobered me up is she had a line, now I'm paraphrasing here, but uh, she understood that we were made for eternity. Uh, get used to it, get used to it. And that's the beauty of St. Therese. She's saying, this is not a two year battle. This is not 10 years. This is forever. You're uh, a child of God. You know, the whole purpose, the catechism teaches us, you were <laughs> created to know God, to love him, to serve him in this life and be happy with him in the next. So get used to eternity and start equipping yourself for battle here on earth. And uh, what I love how you do in uh, the second part of the book is you really start to engage the battle. Uh, you talk about the secret sun. And when you uh, revealed that and you said in history, uh, God works a lot in secret, but how you used to like Superman, um, <laughs> all the characters in Star Wars, how they were in secret, but of course they got their mission done. And just as Jesus Christ was the secret son who completed the mission. So I loved how you began the second part of your book, uh, revealing this thing, everything's done in secret, but uh, there's great power in that. You know, my background is in, in drama and theater and, and literature and so forth. And so naturally, I draw on all these things. I, I'm, I'm not a real big theologian, um, but I, I like to see the truth of the gospel um, as it's revealed in many, many different ways. And I know it sounds kind of corny. Oh, 
Jesus is God's Superman. Well, I, I'm, I hope I'm not being quite as trendy and corny as that. But what I have done is traced a particular theme in stories, um, whether they're Greek myth or whether they're superhero stories or whether they're um, <clears throat> Lord of the Rings and so forth, uh, in which the secret son is the hero who is very often, interestingly, an orphan. He doesn't have a father, an earthly father. Uh, and he's been adopted by usually an aunt or an uncle who lives in the country. Like you said, Superman, Spider-Man, Frodo Baggins, Dorothy from the Wizard of Oz. The list goes on of orphan heroes uh, who are little people who are very often therefore insecure and uncertain of their identity, uncertain about their role and their destiny in life. Um, and they're given some great task to do. Uh, Frodo Baggins has to take the ring and 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 take it back to the to the cracks of doom and destroy it, you know. And and so I picked up this and said, look, this is the theme of the Secret Son. Is the way God works in the world. He also sends his son, who's born into a peasant family in a little backwater of called Nazareth. Um, his mother would have been perceived as a single mother, probably, and Joseph, his adoptive father. So all these themes are echoing into the gospel. And when we see the story elsewhere, we then recognize it in the gospel. So I've tried to bring this out a bit and say the secret son is the way God does is he, the way God introduces his secret agent into the enemy territory, which is this world. Um, and then I go on in the book, as you've pointed out, to say if God did that with Jesus, he's still doing it with us now. So if you're an ordinary person and you think, well, I've never done anything rich and famous. I've never done anything stupendous. I've never been a Superman or a superhero or whatever. No, well, that's just the point. The great people are that God uses are always the little people, um, the secret son. And I brought that out because um, uh, I really was writing the book, especially for men uh, at men's conferences. I go around speak at men's conferences. And I said, I want to write a book for these guys and really get this stuff across them at depth. Um, well, the conferences have been dried up now for because of the pandemic, but you and I are both going to be involved in this online conference in a few weeks' time in July. Uh, it's actually called Immortal Combat, um, Living the Victory, and I'm excited by it. I, I know you're going to be doing some talks. You talk about you're talking talk about uh, Archbishop Sheen. Yes, I'm giving three talks at the conference. Uh, okay. the, first, the first talk is simply uh, getting right with Mary and getting Mary right. And I think okay. men need the Blessed Virgin Mary. You speak a great deal about the little lady in your book oh, yeah. and uh, her example. So men need some uh, good talks about the Blessed Virgin Mary and how she makes sense. She leads by example. Um, of course, we need to develop a better relationship with our mother. Uh, we have strained relationships with our biological mothers, uh, our adoptive mothers, but we sometimes have a strained relationship with the Blessed Mother. So I'll tackle that. I'll tackle uh, the seven deadly sins uh, in a way uh, with Sheen's wisdom from the cross, the seven last words. And I know, Father, you're going to talk a great deal about the power of the cross, preaching Christ and him crucified. So I'll tie in to your theme there. And then I give a talk entitled Priest, Prophet and King, Take Your Position. And uh, what we do on that is that uh, when men are baptized, they are baptized and anointed to become priest, prophet, and king. But the problem is, is no one reminds them of their mission. And sometimes they're, thir they're 30, 40 years old, and then they, I'm supposed to be priest, prophet, and king. Where do I begin? And so I give them a little coaching how to become priest, prophet, and king. So um, that's mine. I know you're going to talk about the three R's. You're going to talk about the cross. And uh, the other speakers that are coming to the conference, you've brought a great lineup uh, with you. Um, maybe you can talk about that a little bit. Yeah, um, I uh, Dominic D'Souza is the guy, young guy who's organizing. He's really tech savvy and he's got a marketing background. So he's put the conference together and done all the tech stuff. And um, I worked with him then to reach out to some of the people that I've met on the conference speaking circuit. Um, Father Donald Calloway and Father Leo Patalinghog, Pat I always can say, never say his name. Um, Father Larry Richards, uh, Deacon Harold Brooks Silvers, uh, and Dan Burke from the Avila Institute and others. Uh, and a whole range of other speakers, um, some a, a lot of new voices, younger voices as well. The talks are short, they're punchy. Um, and this is a new kind of thing to do this 
um, online conference. We're going to see how it goes. I'm, I'm excited by it. I think it's got lots of potential. Uh, after all, if I travel to Cincinnati and speak to 500 guys at a conference in Cincinnati, that's terrific. But, you know, this has the potential of being global and, and really contacting a lot of people. So I'd encourage your listeners to, to sign up and also to tell their friends and say, hey, let's make this thing roll. Yes. And I love how you've um, put together like a catechesis. There's four general themes. There's uh, men talking about Mary and the saints. There's men talking about Christ-centered spirituality. Uh, there's others talking about healing and deliverance. So, And then, of course, the church and scripture and tradition and the church teaching. So these four categories are unique, but uh, I think if men, say, attend all 26 talks, they're going to get a great program. And what I love about what Smart Catholics has done is that everyone who registers for the conference, they keep those talks. Um, right. It's not it's not a one and done. Uh, you sign up for the talks. That's your personal library. Uh, I'll be able to look back on your talk about uh, resentment, rage, and all the other R's that are available and say, I can replay that talk in July, August, September, October, as much as I need. So I love what they've done. They've kind of put it together. And I know they have the early bird special for $10. So um, I think that expires today, actually. Today's Friday, the uh, Wednesday, the 24th. So um, yeah, they've extended it, actually. I just got word from Dominic that oh, it's okay. the, the 29th of June. They've extended that. And uh, there's also, uh, we've worked a deal with the publisher, Sophia Institute Press. So they're offering a 30% discount to all the people who sign up for the conference so they can buy, and I'll show the people again, uh, Immortal Combat from Father Dwight for 30% off. And um, I always recommend that you read the book before the conference. It'll help you a great deal. And all the Archbishop Sheen books that I've been sharing, they're 30% off too. So uh, well, how, do they, how, do they, how do the conference uh, attendees um, take advantage of that 30% discount? Right. When they register for the conference, they will be given the promo code. And so there's a special promo code for the conference and it's good to the end of August. So August 31st, it expires. So from now to the, to the time you register to August 31st, uh, everyone will be entitled for a 30% discount. And they'll just use the promo code that they'll get when they register for right. the conference. Yeah. yeah, that's where Dominic's done such a great job. He's, he's, he knows how to... Um, to manipulate the, the media and, and, and the, the possibilities that the new media gives us to be able to do all this kind of stuff so that um, when you sign up, you stay uh, in touch with them. And, you know, there's just lots of different, uh, you know, there's giveaways, there's discounts, there's lots of stuff, for the advantages that are going on. Right. And, and the lineup is great in the sense that, yes, you have what I call the six big names, you know, yourself, Father Larry Richards, Father Calloway, Deacon Harold, um, you know, you have, uh, of course, as you said, Dan Burke, these are all EWTN favorites. But when I look at the other people that uh, that he's brought aboard, uh, Sam Guzman from The Catholic Gentleman, um, I just think of um, so many lay evangelists that, uh, you know, we see it at Catholic men's conferences, but do you ever gather them all together? And there's, I think every small town has a local guy that can yeah. give dynamite talks and uh, I tell you, Dominic's found these men and brought them together. It's beautiful. And these guys, these guys are doing fantastic work. I mean, one of the people's from my parish, uh, guys is from my parish, a guy called Vincent Weaver. He and his wife work really hard at an apostolate here in South Carolina, which is called, um, oh, how it's called, it's called fam mom. Family Honor Incorporated. Yeah, uh, yeah family, family Honor. And <laughs> my parishioner, I can't remember, his Family Honor, which which goes around to parishes and, and teaches, um, you know, young people about uh, faithful chastity and faithful relationships and so forth. He's a great guy, but he's not, you know, he's not a well-known EWTN personality or something like that, but he's a terrific guy and a smart guy. He's going to be giving some of the talks too. Yeah, I mean, his talk is called The Crucial Role of Dads and Husbands in the Family and Society Today. Yeah. Uh, we all need a refresher course because some of us don't have a roadmap. We either come from broken families. Um, again, I'm not afraid to admit I need help. And uh, these men will do that. So uh, yeah. again, a great variety of uh, bloggers and uh, artists. I always say we're artisans. And uh, no, I, th I think it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Um, Father, 
of course, everyone can find your book uh, through your own website, DwightLongenecker.com. And um, also they can find you at Sophia Institute Press and Amazon and all the other places where fine Catholic books are sold. So um, we have that. And uh, I know that we have the men's conference and we'll provide the links, of course, to just visit Smart Catholics. And um, the posters, are they look great. I love the poster. I've got one here, probably above me too. But um, uh, you've got uh, St. Maximilian Colby there to um, uh, usher in uh, the, the conference. And um, I know that St. Therese is near and dear to your heart, but uh, St. Maximilian Colby, I tell you, he was a great missionary evangelist and um, uh, he leads away heroic life too. He was willing to well, lay down his life. I'll tell you that poster when Dominic first designed it did have actually had Therese of Lisieux there instead of Maximilian Colby. And I said, look, I love St. Therese, but I think this fierce look of Maximilian Colby with his beard is just going to be a real stunner. And I said, and, and who was a greater greater warrior than, than the one who founded the Knights of the Immaculata, you know? So <laughs> yes. he said, okay, good, good, good one, Father. Let's do that. So he swapped the pictures over. Right, um, right. What I love, though, is you're really focusing in on the power of the cross. Many of the speakers are speaking about Christ and him crucified, that that's the formula. He's the model. We have to follow his way. And uh, you, even in the book, uh, invite people to just have that. I call it this altar call where you stand before the crucifix and you just say, Lord, <laughs> work with me. I mean, I'm paraphrasing here, but uh, you said it best, so maybe you can, uh, I, I think of it as an altar call, but it's really yeah, a it response is. to the and crucifix. I'll, I'll you know? tell you one of the things which, which prompted this book was <clears throat> I was going down <clears throat> I-85 uh, in North Carolina, I guess maybe two years ago now, um, and I'm coming south, 185, coming home to South Carolina, and all the traffic on the northbound side of the road was was stopped and as I went further south, on all of the uh, bridges over 85 were crowded with emergency vehicles and cars and crowds of people. And then when I went a little bit further south towards Charlotte, I noticed that on the north side of the road, alongside of the road, was a lot of people just standing there. I'm going, what is going on here? And I just then I realized it was Billy Graham's cortege going from North Carolina to Charlotte, up to Washington, where he was going to lay in state. And I'm coming home and I'm saying, whoa, this is that nobody's reported this. This is this is fantastic news. All of these people have turned up to pay their respects to this Christian evangelist. Uh, this is this is awesome. So I went home um, that night <clears throat> and as I said, I was brought up in the Billy Graham kind of world, you know, the evangelical Protestantism. So I went back and watched one of Billy's um, rallies from, oh, it must have been like 1981 or something like that. And it was in Chicago. He was in one of his big stadiums. And Billy Graham's up there. And he just, he just preached the gospel. It was just as simple and straight as you could want. It was, our world is in a mess because we are sinners and all of us are involved in this sin and Jesus died to save you from your sins and if you accept him he will change your life and then I'm thinking, sitting there thinking he's going to call him up forward he's going to give the call and sure enough he said so I'm in his famous phrase he says I'm going to ask you to get up out of your seats because he's spoken that kind of North Carolina accent I'm going to get ask you to get up out of your seats and come forward and I'm like, whoa, he, and they did uh, in thousands. They're standing up and they're streaming forward. And I'm saying, this is it. He, um, Billy Graham preached the cross. And then I watched an interview with him when he was now like 101 years old or something. It was one of the last interviews he gave. And the interviewer said, what message do you have for our listeners? And he said, uh, it's the same message I've always given. He says, I'm not a, a theologian and I'm not a, a deep thinker. He says, but, uh, you know, basically Jesus loves you. And you need to receive him. Uh -huh. And that still hits home, you know. And, and so there you, you're right. In my book, I actually, I, I forget where it is, but at one point I said, look, this is the, this is the crux of the matter. Use the pun. This is, this is really where the rubber meets the road. Yeah. Have you ever have you ever said at the heart of your hearts, 
Lord Jesus, I need you. I'm a sinner. I accept your gift of forgiveness. And if you haven't, then do it right now. Yes, yes. And that's the power of the cross. I think of, um, you know, we all have a crucifix. And I try to say to men, uh, and you've said it in the book too, is get these in your life. Put Get a cross in your life to remind you. I call it my old school app. This is an old school app. Yes, we have cell phones. We have all the apps. This is the old school app that we need to look to to say, he died for me. He died for me. And this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And you say, behold the Lamb. So uh, this is the key. So I think beautifully your book points to the cross to say, this is the answer. This is what we can learn from. And all the men that are speaking at uh, this Immortal Combat Men's Conference uh, share that same conviction. Unless I preach Christ and him crucified. I hope they do. And the beautiful thing about hearing the lay people actually give this message is they're giving the message because so many of our clergy, our bishops and our clergy and our priests in both Protestant and Catholic churches don't preach the mm -hmm. cross. They preach anything but the cross. They preach political correctness. They preach um, uh, rights for gay people. They preach Black Lives Matter. They, they preach environmentalism. They, they, they preach feeding the hungry. They preach uh, anything, anything which might be worthy and might be good, but it's not mm. actually Christianity. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I, I think this is the thing, the reason why legislators are trying to legislate that the crucifixes be taken down is because Archbishop Sheen said, you can't look upon a crucifix and know that you didn't have something to do with it. Uh, yes, you had something to do with it. Uh, your sin put our Lord on the cross, and that's why so many people want it taken down. Uh, I can again, remember... I can remember a, an old story about what, an old monsignor in this. I, I forget I was, some diocese where I was. Anyway, he was, he had to go around to the local Catholic schools and do a little inspection of you know the facilities and you know the curriculum and all the rest of that. And he found that the nuns had replaced the crucifixes with uh, those uh, risen Jesus crosses. You know where Jesus they call them touchdown Jesus where Jesus yeah. goes like this and. Um, but it's not the crucified Lord. And um, he said, well, why do you take, why do you, where, where are the crucifixes? And the nun said, well, we don't want to scare the children. Um, and he sort of said, first thing in my report, put up crucifixes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in, each, in, each, in every classroom, because this is the, the center of our faith. And, and this is why it says in, in the rules for, um, you know, for, for the liturgy, for the Catholic liturgy, that in every church, placed prominently so that the faithful may view it and wonder should be an image of the crucified Lord. And, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you have a beautiful um, crucifix behind you in your backdrop uh, in your office. And so uh, thank you for sharing it with so many of us that are watching this program today. And so, Father, our hour goes by very quickly. And uh, I know it's like anything. Uh, I, want, I want to invite everyone, of course, to visit the Immortal Combat Men's Conference website. We'll provide the links uh, here at the end of the show. Uh, have them come to your website, DwightLonkinEcator.com. And I apologize. I can't say your name five names fast, five times fast, but uh, I think they'll figure it out uh, very quickly. But uh, and of course, Sophia Institute Press. Your book is there, and uh, we encourage everyone to uh, purchase the book. It's a great field manual, and uh, it's a great tool of evangelization for us to meet our friends who maybe haven't connected with a church for years. Um, I, that's what I like what you did is you give us a few examples of how to evangelize and uh, we all need tips. So thank you for doing that. Um, is there anything else you want to share? I know that you do pilgrimages and other things. Um, uh, give us that in the last few minutes here. What, uh, oh, it's only, only to invite people to my blog uh, and website. There's podcasts there. There's special offers. There's uh, a chance to, to, to browse and, and, and connect uh, and to support my work too if they want to as being a donor subscriber it's not most of it's most of the content is free but it's there also watch out um i i've been delaying this only because i'm so busy but i'm really um anxious to start up my youtube channel which is going to be called um, myths monsters and mysteries uh in which i'm really reaching out to people who are interested in this whole area of literature and and um the supernatural the paranormal uh, but always weaving it back to to the faith and to the, the, the christianity so the people who are out there who have a lot of prejudices about the catholic church might just say whoa this is who's this guy he's he's talking about the loch ness monster and 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 ufos and 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 uh, greek myth and and star wars and 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 but oh, 
the Catholic faith too. So um, we're going to mm -hmm. do all that. Yeah. So there's the three P's, the three R's, and now the three M's. So that is great. Oh but yeah, I told you. I told you I was an addict, an addict of alliteration. So <laughs> there you go. Okay. Well, the, the things that I love in three is the Holy Trinity, of course, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So uh, speaking of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I'll ask you to lead us in prayer as we uh, head on out here on Hungry for More. So Father, if you could uh, give us your blessing and uh, lead us in prayer. Thanks for your enthusiasm and your hard work and your right. faithful start, Bishop Sheen. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will bless and watch over all who are watching this video, that you will send your holy guardian angels to be with them, to overcome evil and to live a victorious and abundant life. And now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of Christ and of His, and, and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father Dwight. And uh, men, again, we invite you to come to the Immortal Combat Men's Conference run by Smart Catholics. And uh, again, until next week. God love you. Welcome back to Hungry for More, and I hope you enjoyed that interview with uh, Father Dwight as much as I did. And um, I think we just scratched the surface on his book, and I highly recommend that you pick up a copy. Uh, it's simply called Immortal Combat, and it's available at uh, Sophia Institute Press. And uh, Wherever fine books are sold, as Father Dwight said, it's on his website, Amazon. Uh, but again, an excellent read, uh, excellent read. And of course, the Immortal Combat Men's Conference that we just touched a little bit on. Um, again, I think I want to spend a little bit of time talking about some of the speakers that will be appearing at the conference. And, you know, I think many of us get to know Father Dwight um, uh, through this interview, but also uh, many of us have uh, read his blogs, visit his website, and uh, he's a personality that uh, many of us are familiar with. But uh, when you visit the Immortal Combat Men's Conference website, you'll start to see uh, a number of faces that uh, some of them you'll recognize and other ones you'll go, who is that person? And I just want to share a few little highlights of each one of the speakers and um, of course, uh, introduce them to you. Um, people always ask me for advice and they say, Al, um, you know, this uh, speaker that I see there, Sam Guzman, um, I know he runs Catholic Gentlemen, but tell me a bit more. And, uh, you know, not just for Sam, but for many of the guests. So uh, let's kind of go through the lineup together. And, um, you know, naturally, every men's conference needs some good priests and um, uh, some recognizable names that we can relate to. And uh, one of the uh, uh, very, I think, popular uh, speakers these days is Father Calloway. And uh, Father Calloway uh, will be speaking on uh, Powerful St. Joseph. And, um, you know, I think what a great title for his talk, Powerful St. Joseph. And, uh, you know, he's been sharing uh, the 33-day consecration to St. Joseph. Uh, he's written on Our Lady. Um, you know, he's a trusted name. And um, I'm really looking forward to having him on the show next week. I'm actually uh, going to interview Father Calloway uh, next Thursday. So please tune in and uh, we'll talk about St. Joseph. We'll talk about men's ministry. We'll talk about lots of things. But um, again, he is a great, um, you know, a great presenter and he speaks from the heart. I like his background. He's kind of known as the surfer priest, uh, but God takes these men and uh, plucks them out of society and says, you're mine. <laughs> Now go and feed my people, feed my lambs, feed my sheep. And so uh, Father Calloway does that. So, and, uh, you know, speaking of feeding, I always think of Father Leo uh, uh, Petlinghug. And um, he's, uh, again, has a great program on EWTN called uh, Plating Grace. And, um, you know, I'm a foodie. <laughs> like, you just have to look at me, you know, I haven't missed too many meals. And, um, but what I love about Father Leo is that, um, He'll, of course, I, I want to say draw us in with his recipes, his talking about food. But you know he's uh, giving us the gospel message at the same time. And he's not going to let a, a moment pass without trying to evangelize us. And um, again, his talk will be the role of Mary in trampling the serpent. And uh, he's going to uh, school us on uh, this battle that, uh, of course, we have the Blessed Virgin Mary helping us 
a great deal. And uh, there's a lot we can learn from sacred scripture and a lot we can learn, of course, um, through these holy priests that are going to point us the way. So, uh, Father Leo, really looking forward to his talk. Uh, now, Father Dwight, of course, <laughs> we spent a little bit of time, uh, you know, talking with him today. Uh, but uh, his two talks that he's going to give, uh, he's going to talk about the three R's. And, of course, his, um, the official title of the talks is The Roots of Rage, Resentment, Rivalry, and Revenge. And uh, the three R's are connected to the three P's. And uh, he'll spend a little bit of time talking about that. But I'm really looking forward to his talk on the cross. Uh, he's going to be about, he's going to be preaching Christ and him crucified. And uh, those words of St. Paul, you know, I'm made to preach Christ and him crucified. It's almost like you can try all the other stuff, but the stuff that works is when you preach Christ and Him crucified. So uh, very important uh, that we get that message in our head. And not just um, Father Dwight will be preaching on the cross, many of the speakers will be. So um, looking forward to that. Now, another popular speaker is Father Larry Richards, okay? I think always, what's a men's conference without Father Larry. It seems that everybody uh, knows Father Larry Richards, right? And EWTN, uh, you know, many of the men's conferences have him as a keynote speaker. And so he's come into this men's conference and uh, the, type of, the topic of his talk is simply real masculinity is living as an icon of Christ crucified. It's true, we are to be witnesses. And what are we called to as men? To be like Christ, to lay down our life, to be sacrificial, um, to endure suffering, and to uh, uh, just know that uh, it's not about me. It's not about me. It's about others. And Christ came to save us. And so uh, we have to play our part too. So again, what would a men's conference be without Father Larry, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Now, Deacon, no, no, I've got to remember, Father Jeffrey Kirby, okay? And um, Father Jeff, of course, I didn't really know until I started to uh, look into some of his books. And uh, he wrote a book called Lord Teach Us to Pray. And I put a book together called Lord Teach Us to Pray. So right, uh, right off from the start, I have an affinity to this, uh, this priest. I said, I like what he says. And uh, it's funny, when you Google search some of these presenters, the body of work that they have is amazing. I mean, Father Kirby has written many books. Um, he's appeared on EWTN, many uh, various radio stations, television shows. Um, he's, uh, <laughs> he's been there, done that. He, he's gonna give us a talk uh, simply about Jesus' battle with Satan. And I tell you, this is how we learn. We learn from the master. And so Father Kirby is going to share with us this is Jesus' battle with Satan. Watch what he does. Learn from him. And so uh, I'm looking forward to his talk. Now, Deacon Harold Burke Sivers. Everybody knows Deacon Harold, right? Um, he's my drill sergeant. He really is. I've met him uh, three times, and every time uh, he makes sure that he doesn't lose the opportunity to school me, coach me. Um, they call him a dynamic deacon because you know what? Uh, he was commissioned to work, <laughs> work in the vineyard. And he comes out and he says, men, I'm here to help you. And he does. Now he's going to be talking about the rosary as a spiritual weapon. And you know, Deacon Harold's got all those manly rosaries. And, um, you know, I'm the gas man. So, you know, I've got a gas man rosary too. And, um, you know, you know, I'm praying the rosary when you see this thing come out. But um, again, every man, every man should have a manly rosary. And I really stress that. Um, yes, you know, you've got probably some really nice rosaries, but you got to have a manly rosary. So, um, and I know that there'll be many, um, opportunities for you to pray the rosary over the conference. Uh, but again, Deacon Harold's going to give us the talk of all talks about using the rosary as a spiritual weapon. Because, I mean, how often do we hear that? I mean, Padre Pio of Petrocena, he'd always say, give me my weapon, give me my weapon. So uh, men, we're called to arms. We're called to, we are called to arms. Okay, 
So there we have, we have the six, um, you know, priest and deacon to, uh, you know, really set us straight, to put us on the right path. But there is a lineup of great lay evangelists that, uh, again, you'll really enjoy. Dan Burke, um, many of you know him from EWTN, and uh, the Avila Institute, um, um, spiritualdirection.com, uh, a great program that I listen to often, but uh, Dan Burke, author, lecturer, I mean, he knows this stuff, and you know what? He, he suffered, and Archbishop Sheen said, you know, there's two people that you can trust, um, people who are older, and people who have suffered, and uh, many of our speakers have suffered um, many uh, difficulties. Uh, but Dan speaks from the heart. Uh, his books, um, simply spiritual warfare. Uh, his latest bestseller, excellent book, uh, offered by Sophia Institute Press, and uh, Into the Deep, a very popular book that came out uh, a little while ago. Uh, but I truly like uh, Dan Burke's book. Um, it's navigating the interior life. And uh, it's not only a book, it's an audio book. There's a study guide because uh, we need to navigate the interior life. And Dan, again, gives spiritual direction. So really happy to have Dan Burke uh, in the house for the conference. Also, too, you know, when I speak about his books, um, uh, many of the speakers have books with Sophia Institute Press. And uh, Sophia Institute Press is offering a 30% discount to everyone that signs up for the conference. So uh, when you sign up, um, I know they have the early bird special right now till June 29th. And so you sign up um, and then you get 30% off all the books at Sophia Institute Press. Like you can save a lot of money if you're a reader. And even if you're not a big reader, every man needs one or two good books. So uh, this is your chance to, um, again, get some good books in your house at a good price. But uh, Dan Burke uh, has written many. So, all right, uh, we keep moving through these great lay evangelists. And, um, um, you know, this was a name I didn't really know. Um, and again, uh, he's Portuguese. So I, I, my wife is Portuguese. So, you know, I've got to get the pronunciation just right. And it's uh, Pedro Gabriel Domingos. Okay. Now, Pedro Gabriel is uh, going to be speaking about Pope Francis and silence. And I love the little tagline he has at the end here. He says, how to defeat the false angel of light. The false angel of light. And we know deceptions, all of these things. Uh, we're always interested in the papacy. Um, and um, um, Pedro Gabriel knows about the papacy. He's been writing about Rome, the Holy Father, for years in his blog, and uh, he's going to uh, give a talk that I think many of us will be very interested in, because I think we're always asking questions with, you know, uh, there's two popes right now, Pope Benedict, Pope Francis, um, a little confused. Um, we always need some good advice, and, uh, you know, Pedro's your man, <laughs> so uh, I love him, and of course, um, I, I tell you, um, you know, Portuguese people, they have these longer names. So he just goes by Cape Pedro Gabriel, but he's also a doctor. And I spoke with him today, and he's an oncologist. So, uh, you know, he's a frontline worker. There's a man that can uh, share many good stories with us. So uh, let's pray for our doctors. And, of course, let's pray for the men's conference. But you'll really enjoy uh, Pedro Gabriel's talk on uh, the papacy, but uh, especially... Again, this line that is so true, how to defeat the false angel of light. And um, man, we need to, uh, I guess, clear the smoke of Satan and uh, expose the lies. So good stuff. All right. Robert LeBlanc, good friend of mine. He's from Canada. And, um, you know, I'm partial to the Canadians in the lineup because every so often you got to wave the flag, right? So um and uh, Robert has uh, taught for 20 years, um, a Catholic school teacher, uh, lay evangelist, uh, had him on the Hungry for More show uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, he's an author, and uh, he's uh, going to give a talk at the conference 
on how the Catholic faith strengthens our marriage. And it's so true. It truly does strengthen marriages. So um, we have to remind ourselves of that message. And uh, Robert will do an excellent job. And he has a, a beautiful website just uh, simply called The Catholic Moment, because uh, we all need <laughs> that Catholic moment in our lives. So uh, glad to have Robert as part of the team for the Immortal Combat Men's Conference. Um, we continue uh, with uh, Daniel Johnson. Now, um, we have to be serious uh, sometimes that, um, you know, when you go to a men's conference, there's going to be talks about the seven deadly sins, addictions, all of these things. And so uh, Daniel Johnson is our therapist. He is the house therapist. Uh, he does this. This is his profession. And he's going to be talking about the sadly de seven deadly sins. Uh, he works at the Divine Mercy Clinic and Family Center. And, uh, you know, uh, again, uh, let's be honest. We need sometimes professional help. And it's beautiful when the professionals come and um, give us the goods. Um, sometimes it's hard to admit to say, maybe I do need professional help. Maybe I need to see a psychologist, maybe I do need uh, some spiritual direction. And uh, it's nice to have these resources available to us. So uh, really happy to have Daniel Johnson uh, give a talk at this conference. Now, we, um, of course, uh, this is a name many of you may know, Anthony Digman. And, um, you know, Anthony's, uh, again, a lay evangelist. He's out there, um, you know, just, um, I like to say, uh, flashing his lightsaber, <laughs> but um, again, he wrote two books that um, I think many people are still talking about. Uh, he's the author of Using the Force and the author of Made for Holiness. And uh, I tell you, he meets people where they're at. He, uh, he pulls us in. Um, of course, he's a catechist at heart, but he wants to uh, bring us to Christ. And he's going to be giving a talk simply entitled Made for Holiness, a Catholic Introduction to Demons and Exorcism. And um, yeah, this is something that's a little bit scary. We always saying, yeah, I know th that this is all about demons, principalities, powers, all of this stuff. And I know that I have to root sin out of my life. I know I need to, um, you know, bind a lot of these things in the name of Jesus. But I think we have to need, we need questions answered about exorcism. And, you know, demons. So I think a lot of us need some coaching. And so Anthony's going to coach us. He's going to uh, explain the topic to us very well and uh, get us uh, thinking. Yes, spiritual battle, demons, principalities, powers, um, and that we need to be engaged in this battle. So, again, very much looking forward to Anthony's talk uh, at the conference. All right. Um, Good friend of mine, Patrick Sullivan, another Canadian that uh, is in the lineup. And um, again, Patrick, um, many of you may know, uh, it's uh, his his apostolic works called Evango. Um, I like to almost say evangelization on the go. And uh, Patrick has been sharing the faith for many years, not just in Canada, but uh, across North America. Uh, he does very beautiful bite-sized pieces uh, messages that you can handle, and that's what I love. I, I love the uh, the short story, uh, but he's a very gifted speaker, and um, I tell you, he will be in the house, and his talk is going to be uh, simply entitled, The Priest, a Wimp, or a Warrior, and uh, I, I love that. I love that, uh, The Priest, a Wimp, or a Warrior, and uh, I, I hopefully, again, I think we know He's going to say warrior, but sometimes we think, man, sometimes I see some wimpy priest, but I wish I saw more warrior priest. And, um, but I think, you know, one thing we have to realize is that we're all called to be priest, prophet, and king. And so uh, hopefully we're not wimpy priests, but warrior priests. So uh, again, uh, Patrick is going to uh, give us, uh, I guess I want to say, a clear path to the goal. A clear path so that we get it right and uh, so looking forward to that presentation by uh, Patrick Sullivan from Ivanko. Um, now the Aussies I like to say the, the Aussies and um, 
you know, this is what's beautiful. This is an international conference in that we have Americans and Canadians, but uh, we have three men from Australia going to share their testimonies, their stories, their witness uh, with us at this conference. And uh, they all have a very unique background, uh, but uh, they're all part of a group called Parousia. Perusia. Now I got to get that right. And um, again, if you go to their website, you'll see they have not only the very best of the best Australian speakers, but they, of course, uh, invite many of the great international speakers to uh, speak and lecture on um, their social media outlets. Um, they are great at coordinating pilgrimages and sharing the faith. And so, uh, again, Perusia, um, you're going to hear a lot more about that apostolic work. But um, one of the speakers they have is Matthew Herman Tagg. And um, I hope I pronounced that right. And uh, Matthew is going to talk about St. Benedict for the modern man. And so, um, again, he is... Um, I saw a bunch of letters behind his name, right? So when you see the letters, you know, OSB, you know it has to do with St. Benedict. So uh, he is of the uh, oblate of the Order of St. Benedict. And so who better to talk about St. Benedict than someone who is part of the Order? So, uh, of course, um, I think we, I think as men, a lot of times we need to develop a rule in our lives. And that's what I love about uh, many of the Third Order uh, groups, uh, Third Order Dominicans, Third Order Franciscans, um, of course, the Oblates, they have rules, a rule of life. And so I think we're going to learn a great deal uh, because I'm sure that Matthew will share with us a little bit about the discipline that St. Benedict uh, had in his life and what we can learn from him. So again, uh, St. Benedict for the modern man. So I'm really looking forward to that talk. All right. With the Australians, we have also Kevin Bailey. Uh, I like him because he's a money man. So, I mean, he has a financial background, but a uh, great presenter. And we need all walks of life, businessmen, men of trade, doctors, you know. Again, we're all called to take up our position and share the gospel, no matter what position we hold. And so uh, Kevin is going to talk about St. Joseph and uh, the essence of fatherhood. So, uh, you know, I don't think we can ever have too many St. Joseph talks. And I know Court Father Calloway is going to be speaking about St. Joseph, but uh, Kevin Bailey is also going to speak about St. Joseph and uh, the essence of fatherhood. So, and then, of course, there's the founder of uh, Perusia and um, of course, uh, we just flashed a picture of uh, Kevin there, uh, but the founder of Perusia is uh, Charbel Reich, and I hopefully pronounced that name right, but uh, Charbel, um, I tell you, he has a faith journey that uh, I think will uh, rock many of us, and that, um, you know, had a, what I call a taste of Islam in his life, and, um, you know, there's a video that you can see that uh, he uh, gives his testimony where he talks about how Islam led him back to Christ. And uh, I think there's lots of confusion now. We're seeing people saying, you know, I'm going to leave uh, my, my Christian faith and become a Muslim, practice Islam. Uh, many of us have had family members that have converted, and so it breaks our heart. But I think we're looking for advice. And um, uh, again, Charbel uh, has a lived experience of how Islam brought him to Christ, but uh, he's going to be talking about, uh, again, I love what he's phrased this. He says, the Catholic Church is God's true salvation army. And so he's very enthusiastic about the faith. And just the title of that talk, the Catholic Church, the Catholic Church God's true salvation army, he, he gets it. He gets it. So, um, and let's be honest, we all love hearing the Aussie accent. Um, there's something beautiful. God, of course, I gave many of us accents. I mean, people think I got an accent. <laughs> I'm just Canadian, right? A, eh? but um, uh, there's we get lots of people make fun of us all the time how we talk. But um, it's great to have the Aussies in the house, and they're coming with 
a zeal and a love for the Lord that's just going to be infectious. So uh, looking forward to all three of these gentlemen sharing uh, their stories with us uh, from Perusia. And um, again, um, <laughs> um, don't make fun of our accents, okay? Thank the Lord for our accents. All right. Uh, we continue here. We've got 23 speakers at this conference, and I'm just trying to introduce them. Uh, I'm going to have another show where we maybe expand on uh, everybody's apostolic work, but uh, please look them up. It's amazing. I watched videos today of many of our presenters, and uh, all of these men are engaged in apostolic work where they're just trying to bring Christ to the world in their own way. Uh, we all do it differently. Some of us are salesmen. Some of us are men of trade. Some of us are writers. Um, we all have a different craft. And um, But again, we're all on that mission to preach the gospel. And I love what Archbishop Sheen said. He reminded us, remember, uh, the first words that our Lord said was, come. And then he said, go. <laughs> he said, go. So men, let's come to this conference. And then as we're brought uh, to a greater awareness of the power of the cross and uh, iron sharpening iron, we can go back out into the mission field and be effective and go back into the battle to fight some more. So all of these good things. Uh, but uh, I said in the interview with uh, Father Dwight that in every town, there are men who can give great talks, who are the local leaders. And uh, this is what's beautiful about some of these online conferences. We get to hear presentations from men that we may never see. Uh, they don't make it to EWTN or they don't have, you know, a best-selling book, but they have a message that's very important. And so, uh, again, we have a good speaker in Vincent Weaver. And uh, Father Dwight mentioned that he's one of his parishioners. And uh, he's going to be giving a talk on the crucial role of dads and husbands in the family and society today. And uh, we really know, and so you see the picture there. He's a beautiful family man. And of course, um, again, his zeal for the mission of fathers to take their position and um, sacrifice for their families. Um, you, you know that uh, he not only talks the talk, he walks the walk. So uh, again, looking forward to his presentation. Um, now, and I say to people, you know, the presentations, what's beautiful about this conference is when you sign up, um, you can pick all the talks you want. Uh, there'll be some naturally that you'll go to right away and say, oh, I want to hear Father Calloway's talk. I want to hear uh, Father Dwight's talk. Um, I might even want to hear Al Smith's talk, you know, <laughs> uh, because I'm giving three reflections during the conference. Uh, I'm a talker. You, you might have noticed that, all right? Um, Anyway, um, so you get to sign up for the talks. And what's beautiful is when the conference is over, you'll always have access to those talks. So it's not a one and done where, you know, you pay your conference fee. And if you miss a talk between July 7th and 9th, you, you'll never see it again. No, all the talks that have been uh, presented during those three days will be yours to keep forever and ever, okay? Um, the, it's your digital library, and that's what I love about this. So yes, there will be a conference from July 7th to 9th, and we'll be having many, um, you know, uh, Facebook Live events, there'll be a Facebook lounge, you'll be able to join other um, conference attendees, ask questions of the speaker, um, you know, there's giveaways. Uh, I'm giving away a few books. Father Dwight's giving away his book. Um, there's lots of free stuff and good value for your money. And of course, the $10 um, early bird special. It's, you know, I'm thrifty. So <laughs> I think everybody that's out there that's thrifty, it's, you'll, it'll appeal to you. So um, early, bird, early bird special before June 29th. After that date, is $25. So um, again, there's motivation there. And you get the 30% discount from Sophia Institute Press and all of the books that they carry. So, all right. Now, few more speakers I just want to touch on. Um, Sam Guzman, okay, from The Catholic Gentleman. Um, I'm having Sam on my show uh, next week also. I'm doing a double header. I'm doing, uh, going to have Sam Guzman on my show on Wednesday and Father Calloway on my show on Thursday. So we're going to uh, do back to back. Um, and of course, Sam put together this book, The Catholic Gentleman, 
a must-read uh, men, uh, Sam gets it. And he's a younger gentleman, but uh, a writer, a blogger, uh, does um, a podcast that uh, is excellent, uh, that many people are raving about, um, because he talks about the topics that we need to discuss. And this is where I think if you really love someone, you're going to talk about the the difficult topics. You're going to talk about pornography. You're going to talk about, you know, manning up, um, taking your position. And uh, Sam does that. He, uh, of course, in his uh, humble way, uh, his little apostolate, he's just saying to men, let's be gentlemen. Let's rise to the occasion and be gentlemen. So um, he's going to be talking about the five spiritual weapons for your arsenal. Um, and men, sometimes we don't know uh, what the spiritual weapons are. And uh, we need someone, we need a coach every so often to say, men, you need this, 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 and this, okay? And so Sam is going to talk to us about the five spiritual weapons we need in our arsenal. So uh, again, looking forward to Sam. And um, of course, he's uh, been... Um, you know, speaking at these digital conferences for quite some time now, and uh, very much a respected speaker. So again, I look forward to his presentation. All right, John Welch, okay. Uh, I didn't really know who John Welch was until I started to look him up on the internet. And uh, he does uh, a podcast, uh, a YouTube presentation called The Catholic Late Night Show. And um, I tell you, there's a young man that pours his heart out and uh you know he's going to talk about porn a porn addiction and uh, it's the fight of your life and john shares his story how he struggled with this since the age of nine and uh i tell you you want a courageous man john welch is that courageous man and uh he's not afraid to say to men and women let's talk about this issue and uh, you know what there is a fix and it's a difficult journey, but it's possible. And so John preaches a message of hope. He gives constructive uh, advice to help. And, uh, you know, what would a men's conference be without someone talking about porn addiction? And so uh, John is, um, he, he, he responded to the call. And his testimony is very powerful. So please, uh, I think uh, if there's one talk I recommend you don't miss, it's going to be John's talk on, um, again, the porn addiction, and it truly is the fight of your life for so many of us. All right. There's lots of bloggers, lots of podcasters uh, in the lineup, and um, again, many of you may know T.L. T. Putnam, and uh, again, does a show called... Um, I want to just say outside the wall radio show. <laughs> I always I was puzzled when I heard that outside the wall radio show and uh but of course it talks about how we're to go outside the walls go and preach the gospel and he's been having this podcast for quite some time now uh when you see um tl's uh, list of accomplishments of course he was um, a methodist seminarian um, converted to catholicism and uh his um I like to say his podcast goes deep. He takes the time. He has these longer programs where he truly talks about the issues. And, um, you know, I, I always wondered what TL stand it for, stood for, right? You know, when people say, my name's TJ or my name's TL or my name's AJ. And so uh, TL Putnam, but uh, I like to say he's tough love. He's going to, uh, you know, have this conversation to say, we need to chew on this. We need to really uh, understand our catechism, understand our faith, because we need to defend our faith. And uh, you can't give what you don't have. And you need to spend time in study and uh, listening to some solid podcasts where you're informed by experts. And uh, T.L. Putnam does that. He brings the experts onto his show and... Uh, you know, gets it done. He gets it done. So uh, his talk is simply entitled Finding Spiritual Success in Today's World. And we need to taste a little success. And uh, so uh, TL will deliver on that, I'm sure. Uh, finding Spiritual sec Success in Today's World. All right. Uh, Taylor Schroll, 
many of you uh, know him. He was on my show uh, just a little while ago. Um, <laughs> he's just high energy, high energy. I still haven't figured him out yet, um, you know, but uh, his love for the Lord is infectious. Uh, <laughs> he, he makes Catholicism fun. That's one of his taglines, making Catholicism fun. And his talk's going to be simply armor up armor up okay so you know it's going to be about the armor of god um that's what i think it's going to be about so but uh again uh taylor uh will not disappoint um he's kind of loud but we need we need some guys with volume we need some guys with volume and he is um of course who runs forte catholic a nonprofit organization uh doing great work and uh, so his presentation armor up is going to be fabulous. So uh, looking forward to his high energy. All right, uh, Dave Denuso. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, now there's there's always got to be what I call like the alpha male guys, the, the, the guys that you just go, now that's a man's man, and he's going to give the manly talk at these men's conference. So uh, Dave Denuso. I mean, you know you got somebody that really is into men's ministry when uh, his – Ministry is called True, <laughs> True Manhood Men's Ministry. Like, I mean, I, I'm, I'm laughing. It's a nervous laugh, but it's more, again, True Manhood Ministry. Like, I mean, I can't even say that three times fast, but there's Dave. You know he's got that, that rugged look. Uh, if you look him up on the Internet, he's always given talks uh, to men. He bears his soul, and he's saying to us, we need true manhood men's ministry and again that true manhood men's ministry like i mean that is so simple and to the point and dave is going to deliver he's going to call us to be true men true men and um, his talk it just nails it he says christ-centered or you centered and i think all of us go i get you i get you because we live in a you-centered society. It's all about me, me, me. But we need to become Christ-centered, not you-centered. So uh, Dave is going to uh, give us the roadmap and the reminder. And we may have to make fridge magnets to say Christ-centered, not you-centered. So uh, again, Dave will truly help us to um, be a true man and live true manhood out. So uh, again, I thank you. I thank, um, you know, the people at Smart Catholics for finding these gentlemen and inviting them to give these talks because they're so necessary today. Um, and of course, they're, I don't want to leave out Tony Vicinda. Okay, Tony. Um, when you see a picture of Tony, you go, all right, this guy must uh, be, in the, be in the beard business because um, He's got what just got that full righteous beard, and Tony, of course, uh, has. Uh, he's called the head beard evangelist. There he is. I mean, the guy's got it down, and uh, of course, he's uh, very generous. He's an entrepreneur. Um, they call him an idea aider, uh, but he's a missionary, and uh, you know, he has um, a, a company called Catholic Bomb, where you get all your great products for your beard lip balm. There's, there's all kinds of good stuff. And of course, he has uh, lended his support to the conference as a sponsor, uh, the Catholic Bomb Company. And um, again, I think, you know, every man needs to um, not um, bow down, I don't want to say, but the men that grow these beards, I applaud them. I applaud them. They wear them well. Uh, it's very uh, patriarchal. But uh, the message that they will deliver is powerful. So um, God uses beards in a very mysterious way. I mean, you look at St. Nicholas. I mean, everybody talks about his beard, right? <laughs> but the story of St. Nicholas is powerful. It's really powerful. But uh, Tony is going to give a talk simply, The Mantle of Masculinity. And uh, again, he's got me hungry for more the mantle of masculinity. So um, looking forward to Tony's presentation. And, uh, you know, can't forget about me. I'm not here to talk about me, but uh, I'm giving three talks. And um, they're talks that uh, are I give from the heart. Um, the one talk is simply at the foot of the cross, 
where are all the men? And, and we ask that question all the time, where are all the men? And 2,000 years ago, they asked that same question, uh, where are all the men? There was the Blessed Mother, St. Mary Magdalene, the other women, and there was St. John. But, you know, where was Peter? Where was Andrew? Where was everybody else? Well, they were struggling. They were afraid. And um, again, they made that choice and probably regretted it. But uh, they came back the following day. And in the next few weeks, they regrouped and they reviewed the tapes and uh, learned from their mistakes. And men, so that is what the essence of this talk will be. We'll get to review the tapes together and go over where we've gone wrong and how we can amend our life and truly uh, become saints, you know. And the apostles became saints. Yes, they were missing in action, you know, at that critical moment when our Lord was on the cross. Uh, but they responded to the call. They regrouped and uh, became saints. So uh, that's one of the talks. The other talk I'm giving is priest, prophet, and king. Take your position. Uh, give a few, uh, um, I want to say, time, uh, just words of timely advice to help men to say, you know what? I know I'm supposed to be priest, prophet, and king, but um, can you help me out here? Can you give me a few tips? And so I'll give you a few tips through the wisdom of Archbishop Sheen. And he trained up many men to be priestly, to be prophets, and to be kings. So uh, there's that reflection. And the other reflection that I'm getting to be known for is getting right with Mary and getting Mary right. And so uh, we got to get right with Mary and get Mary right. And I'm not going to give away too much, but... Um, Again, I think you'll enjoy that presentation. So uh, again, 23 speakers as we speak, everyone giving uh, a talk that uh, they know is um, a lived experience, I want to call it that. These men are going to share their hearts with you. And uh, again, I cannot ask you to um, um, you know, not give this a look in the sense of uh, let's, let's give it a look. Let's give it a serious look because men, we need to have good digital libraries of uh, talks that we can use, uh, not just for our own personal life, but for our sons, our family members, our friends. Uh, many of us are leaders within our parishes. And so uh, watching these videos will help us, uh, help us to develop a good catechesis to share with the men in our parishes. And so um, again, we have to admit that uh, we're lifelong learners and that we need to uh, do a bit of study. And so these, uh, you know, couple dozen presentations are truly a great study guide for you. So I cannot recommend these talks enough. And I invite you to sign up to the Immortal Combat Men's Conference, which is uh, sponsored by Smart Catholics. And uh, again, we'll provide the links um, uh, in the show notes here. And you can see the poster, of course, with St. Maximilian Colby. And uh, again, short talks, dynamic speakers, practical advice, need I say more? And again, iron sharpens iron, and I invite all men to come uh, to this conference to register. And uh, so let us do that. And uh, it wouldn't be a show unless we uh, end with a prayer uh, asking for uh, the help of the Venerable Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen. Of course, many of us know him as a media saint and, uh, of course, uh, again, recognizable face. So <laughs> I'd invite you to uh, pray with me, and uh, we'll pray for the success of the Immortal Combat Men's Conference uh, coming up in a few weeks. So please join me in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Eternal Father, you alone grant us every blessing in heaven and on earth through the redemptive mission of your divine Son, Jesus Christ, and by the working of the Holy Spirit. If it be according to your will, glorify your servant, Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen, by granting the favor I now request through his prayerful intercession. And here we pray for the success of the Immortal Combat Men's Conference. And uh, we pray that men's hearts will be touched and that, uh, again, our good Lord will provide a sense of healing and consolation for so many men and to inspire them to take their positions. And uh, we ask this prayer confidently through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Men, thank you for joining me uh, for this edition of Hungry for More. And of course, I can't forget the ladies uh, that are watching too. Thank you for uh, listening in today. 
help us spread the word and uh, look forward to uh, next week where we'll have uh, back-to-back Hungry for More shows on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Uh, Sam Guzman from Catholic Gentlemen on Wednesday evening and Father Don Calloway um, talking to us on Thursday. So uh, please join us. And so until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord look upon you kindly and bring you peace. And we'll see you next time on another edition of Hungry for More. God love you.